Joining me on the Dr. Bo Show today is Urkana Murray Bartlett, the Aussie woman who is running 150 marathons in 150 days, uh, running tip to toe. So that's bottom to top of the continent of Australia, which only a handful of people have done. And uh, she's doing so in the name of drawing awareness and funds towards uh, the uh, onset of early extinction and uh, species that have already become extinct or on the brink of extinction um, within uh, the Australian borders and obviously throughout. Uh, things that I did not know that I can, we kind of touched on in this episode is that she was an Olympic trials uh, marathoner and uh, maybe is going to head back to that. And uh, our uh, shared love affair for uh, Bo Miles. So without further ado, Urkana Murray Bartlett. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. So, uh, first of all, thanks for doing this. I know this is a, I'm sure that you're doing a lot of PR and all that stuff. So thanks for fitting it in, but, um, yeah. Do you have other stuff today besides this? Oh, today's been, it's getting close to Christmas. So it's slowed down a little tiny bit, but yeah, I've got one. It's not, not so much a podcast, but, um, I've got a meeting with my charity partner after this, cause we're kind of organizing the finish line. So, um, we shut down a bit longer than the U S here over Christmas. Cause it's our summer break too. So right. getting anything done, um, yeah, here during this time is really hard. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. I, um, I went to college in the U S though. So I have a big, big love. Yeah. Where are you based out of? I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, originally from um, Illinois. So where'd you go to school at? Illinois. I went to, uh, Iowa. So Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Yeah. Okay. So I was a Midwest, uh, just, just for, uh, end up only just doing a couple of years. I didn't do the full, um, the full four. I had to go to London instead, but love it. Such an amazing part of the world. Even though you were in Iowa, I guess, can, did you like, have you been to other parts of the U S or was that? Yeah, I have. I'm a big fan of, um, the national parks and particularly Utah. Yeah. Um, Utah is next level. <laughs> a little bit different than Iowa. <laughs> a lot <laughs> i didn't did do you, much exploring through iowa did you run it, no i went to school i went to i got a soccer scholarship so i was playing soccer i didn't start running until i was about 23 so um which i saw I that like, you yeah you joined a running club and that kind of kicked it off yeah yeah i joined a running club when i was um i mean we'll probably get into all of this but um yeah. we're, I joined, we're just gonna get into it this is how i'm gonna roll with this we'll just let it roll from here like a normal combo easy I love it yeah 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 I played soccer all my life and um I guess after college I moved back to my hometown in Melbourne Australia and um yeah I wanted something different I wanted to move out of this tiny little regional town I lived in and I wanted to move to the big smoke so moved into Melbourne with some friends and needed to meet some people because I didn't know anybody um mm -hmm. and I thought oh there's an athletics club across the road from me um let's go down and have a look so I did I wandered down I'd never done athletics before only ever soccer and you know basketball is very much a team sport kind of lady and so yeah I, I I did one session there and absolutely fell in love with it fell in love um and I think my only hesitation to athletics early on was I thought it was quite an individual sport mm -hmm. but since that I I now know that it's yeah, it definitely can be a team sport. There's a lot of, you know, people that wrap around you and support you. And since then, yeah, I haven't really looked back. And now I'm <laughs> running the length of the country. Especially, definitely a team sport with what you're doing, which we haven't even, you know, highlighted yet. So for anybody that, <laughs> since we just kind of jumped into this, yeah. Um, yeah. you are running, correct me if I'm wrong here, is it 150 or 155? 150, yeah, okay. yeah. 150. I think the original plan was 155, but we've rejigged it a little bit um, to, yeah, I think 150 is a good round number. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why, why add another five, which is only at what, another 132 miles or whatever. So whatever. Um, so yeah, this start, what was the start date for this? It was August 20th of this year. So today, to December, when is this pegged to finish? 
January the 16th, 2023. So I've oh, got a, I've got 25 days to go. So, um, yeah, so I'm a day, I finished my 125th marathon this morning. Um, right. And I, thank you. Thank you. And I guess to explain it in a, in, in, in a very broad sense, I'm sort of east of Canberra, um, th- three quarters down the eastern coast of Australia at the moment. All right. So, um, yeah, I was kind of checking out your website, which I'll put links to all that in the show notes and everything for everybody. Um, and I was just kind of, you know, going through how many miles it was and how many kilometers, uh, which again, in the U S I, you know, it's interesting to see the K's, but, um, you know, all being well, the miles. So it's around 3,900 miles or over 3,900 miles, right. And over 62,000, um, kilometers. So it's just, I mean, this is insane. So um, me being a chiropractor and kind of pegging a lot of this on the medical, the first thing I wanted to jump into on this um, was, first of all, I had no clue that you um, attempted or did you go to the Olympic trials or did you, were you trying to get to the trials? Yeah. T- so I gave it a good crack. So off the back of moving into athletics at around 23, I was always designed to run. It's in my my body shape. I'm very tall and um, just naturally have a bit of an engine. So I quickly found out that where I had an engine, I lacked speed. So I, I started off with the five Ks and the 10 Ks and it was pretty good, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't breaking any records, but in the marathon, I definitely shone. I, um, yeah, I took to it quite well and I, I got better and better and better. And, um, yeah, gave it in 2019, gave it everything. I sort of decided I was going to go all in and, yeah, I had a few really good cracks, um, but in I, and, and flew to to the majors. So um, yeah, mm-hmm. Berlin and 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 Tokyo. But in Berlin, I got a hip injury that derailed me at around thirty seven kilometers, and I was on pace. I was running, I can't remember the K pace I was aiming for, like three three forty fives per kilometer. But you'd have to convert that to miles, which would be I very saw, hard. I saw. I don't know if that was a trials time. I saw a two fifty was the PR yeah, okay that's my PR but I was definitely aiming for 15 minutes faster than that I never Good got job. the chance so yeah 15 even more um and then in Tokyo um in Tokyo I went to to do it again but unfortunately it was March of 2020 and as you know as I as I as the plane hit the tarmac in Japan in Tokyo they they shut the race down um wow. for you know two or three years so I never got that chance for that peak fitness and I, I guess similar to a lot of the people you get on the show, I had this kind of incredible fitness going on from a full year of trying for this time. And then the world shut down and nowhere to direct that energy. So I think that's where the rocket kind of caught light for, for tip to toe. Well, don't despair though, because if we learned anything this year from a couple other ladies uh, setting records in the half marathon and the marathon. Um, you still got a lot of years left according to their age profile. So you could still do yeah. all this craziness and still maybe uh, give it another run. But um, I saw in your outside uh, magazine article that actually when you first started this venture, what was it two weeks in? you actually kind of started getting a calf injury. And then it, mm-hmm. again, this is what the article was saying that you had to alter running mechanics to kind of keep going. And then other stuff just kind of kept popping up. And how are you doing now? Like, is everything peachy or are you still? Are you just... <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely what happened. So immediately after changing, I'm a four foot striker. Traditionally, um, it's how I naturally run. Um, and so, yeah, as soon as I got a calf niggle, which would have been from the terrain at the time and maybe overuse, I mean, definitely overuse. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so I ch- started heel striking for the first time in since I was probably an, an early runner and immediately got a tib ant super inflamed tib ant and it was more excruciating than the calf injury so I really didn't do myself any favors there um and had to um I was in the middle of the Daintree rainforest and I had to sort of get this emergency physio to come out and and put some some strapping on my tib ant and just give mm-hmm. it a really big rub to make sure it just cuz cuz yeah overuse injuries of that level as you as you very well know if you don't respect them they're just going to you know worsen and worsen um so i sort of realized that that was more painful than the calf so backed into but got went back to a four foot strike and sort of just tried to get the calf as good as possible but since then I've actually touched wood, um, been relatively injury free. 
Did you, how, what, was there a day or a specific run where you're like, you kind of completely fell into a pace? I'm, I'm sure every day has its own struggles and challenges, but to now, you know, that was two weeks in and now be, you know, uh, almost two months in, um, I mean, you know, what's changed that you're not just, you, most people would think that you would just be breaking down the further you get into this thing, but is that not true? I mean, I'm sure in some ways, but I mean, you're obviously, you're still going. Yeah, that's absolutely surprising me because I'm learning too. Every single day is a learning day for me. Um, no, yesterday was flat and um, I've had, and it was one of my fastest marathons to date. And well, since being out here, obviously they're slower than my race marathons, but I, I kind of have this as a separate category. Um, in December alone, I've had over, let's say five, thousand miles because i was thinking 8k in elevation so um i'm in this very hilly very hilly part of the of australia right now where every mm -hmm. single day is very hilly and off the back of that having one flat one felt you know felt golden so yeah yeah i i'm not running fast out here i'm definitely respecting the distance but in saying that it's definitely feels more efficient to me to actually move a bit quicker and mm -hmm. it's a bit of a it's a bit of a um or how would you say it's a it's a risk factor analysis where if I go too slow, I end up with more time on my feet in a day and less recovery time. But if I go too fast, I borderline overdo it. So I think I found this pace, which in Australia would be 530 pace, 545, mm -hmm. which seems to feel per kilometer, which seems to feel pretty um pretty comfortable to keep going day after day. Yeah. Which is, for a lot of people is still very, very good. And so uh, not knocking your pace at all, especially <laughs> stacking the marathons like you are. And I don't want to, uh, you know, drone on the physical too much because I definitely want to uh, talk about, you know, why you're doing this and a lot of other things um, that were interesting as I was kind of poking around. But um, what um, what are some of the unforeseen challenges that you've dealt with? And then I want to kind of maybe dive into some of the stuff that you're having to do for recovery to be able to keep going. So what, what are some of the maybe physical challenges and mental challenges that were just kind of like, I had no clue this was coming my way. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause I find the physical challenge, these questions kind of more my way of thinking of what I, what excites me because one of the reasons I'm out here on the why is just finding that, physical limit like what what can the human body do if you are smart about it and you you know respect the distance and respect recovery um for me the running has actually been one of the easier parts um where i am starting to struggle or what we did at the start is the setting up so we're moving every day um the camper trailer you can see behind me but i'm, mm -hmm. I'm in a i'm in a camper trailer which needs to be packed up and set up every day and it's it's not a big process, but it's a process. And then always having to find the energy involved with life in the logistics is probably what has worn me down the most because it means you don't get the recovery that you need. Um, so yes, packing up the trailer, moving campsites, finding food, cooking in the outdoors, um, finding a shower, which sometimes is harder than you'd think, um, dealing with the so you can lay down a mat in the grass here in Australia we have everything under the sun that bites you so just try and do a recovery foam roll when there's I've currently got a very inflamed finger because a bee bit me yesterday <laughs> <laughs> things you don't think about when you're uh, thinking about your recovery process for running yes. yeah. <laughs> So there was about no joke three months straight where my legs and my hands and my arms were covered in bites midgy bites <laughs> ink, like mosquito bites like everything bit me so yeah it's hard to it's hard to relax <laughs> so what has there been any um like key component to recovery obviously i'm you know stretching foam rolling warming up things like that but is there anything you know again that maybe surprised you like man if i if i hone in on this it seems like it's it's kept me going more than anything yeah yeah the two big things i lean on with my limited time to recover is food and sleep i notice yeah. that if i don't get at least seven hours of sleep i i am emotionally exhausted i don't have any emotional capacity to keep going i don't have my mental strength just fades so there was a space a couple of weeks ago where um i went through a town and day after day we had dawn meetings that everyone wanted to meet at dawn i had a lot of dawn shoots dawn run clubs inviting me out mm -hmm. dawn pr 
and it was and dawn here was 4 30 in the morning 4 30 and so you know and then at the same time you're not really going to bed because it's summer so daylight saving so i think i was only getting six hours of sleep and it was after five days of that i almost quit and so sleep for me is absolutely the number one followed probably equally by enough food so enough Mm -hmm. calories in my day Um, and I know they're two really simple and obvious things but they're very easy to get wrong and they're very sometimes hard to prioritize Um, so they're my key pillars sleep and nutrition when I think it uh, highlights the importance that it was just you know an hour a day that you were missing versus what you're pegging is you're like you know the best or optimum So just that, you know, then you take that, you know, maybe it's 500 less calories, 300 less calories a day. And you're like, I can feel it. And you're probably so, are you like, have you gotten to a new level of like dialed in? Like, you know, as a runner, especially Olympic trial level runner, like you were dialed in. Now you're like, you're probably just like, boom, I need this, 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 and this. I'm feeling this. Yeah, I'm absolutely dialed into the to the to within I'd say a couple of hundred calories. And what's really interesting as well is I never think of the past. I'm always every day, even mid marathon, I'm always thinking, what can I do today to make sure I can run tomorrow? I'm always thinking tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, and so I'm definitely I'm eating about you know five thousand calories a day minimum. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm I was really focused on on optimum nutrition at the start, so um you know macros and, and and really monitoring your vegetable intake and your good proteins now i'm just focused on calories Get <laughs> so, it in. i mean i had a creamy soda today <laughs> i was gonna say have you found any uh surprising favorites where you're like i'm gonna i'm a pretty healthy person but i tell you what i've been like bringing this into the mix oh barbecue shapes um yeah like <laughs> like soda um yeah potato chip like crisps and like just chips anything hot salty and potato based is in my life at the moment <laughs> sounds like we're at an ultra race that's all i'm hearing yeah. is you're at an aid station so <laughs> it sounds familiar um absolutely that's my life well um kind of pivot a little bit what um I mean, I know because I've read a little bit for people listening, what is the driver behind this? Um, Obviously, um, we'll list your website, which talks about it as well, but kind of explain what you're doing this for beyond, um, you know, expanding your physical uh, horizons. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there was definitely the personal um, aspect to this, which was the Guinness World Record for for most consecutive marathons. And yeah, which we didn't even mention. That yeah, it's yeah, already yeah, been yeah. broken, so, right? Yes, that was broken. So that was yeah. broken on the fourth of um December. So we'll yeah, quickly start there. That was um held by a British, no, sorry, it was a Scottish, two Scottish women. They did it together, um, a duo, and they broke at 106. Before that, it was an American woman, an amputee. Yeah, I was just looking at that, yeah. Yeah, I think it was 95. Yeah, probably, something like that. 95, 95, 96, yeah. Or you're 96, yeah, something along those lines. And then, yeah, um, then it was broken to 106 only in June of last this year. So I do feel bad because they didn't <laughs> hold on to it for too long. <laughs> so where it goes. But I'm a firm believer that records aren't supposed to be held on to. They're just the goalpost of the next person. But, um, yeah, so I broke that at 107 and my goal is obviously 150. But my my why on top of this is I'm a, I'm a big lover of, native animals um and that depends on that's everywhere in the world like a big mm-hmm. big lover of animals and here in australia we're a world leader in biodiversity loss we are terrible at it we have lost just as many animals this year than we lost 200 years ago um and so my kind of goal is to we counteract a, a terrible world record with a good world record mm. um and essentially i'm out here raising money for conservation and awareness for because a lot of aussies don't even understand that we have this crisis i mean our iconic animal the koala is now endangered which is Mm -hmm. you know a globally significant animal um so just getting people more aware of the issue um and for us unfortunately two years ago we had these devastating bushfires um that were globally like everybody had heard about them but then covid sort of put water over the issue and no one really heard about it for two years so the problem is still here (laughs) when your goal is correct me if i'm wrong on this goal is sixty two thousand, right Mm -hmm. raised australian Mm -hmm. and you're at 56 ish yeah 
Yeah. So getting close. And uh, again, we'll link to the GoFundMe page and you can also get there from your website as well. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, though. There's another motivating factor here. And um, we share a namesake. So uh, Bo Miles and his yeah. uh, one of his runs, which I'm a huge fan of his. And I just stumbled across, I don't know what video of his sometime last year. And it's the running joke in our office that like, if I have downtime, I'm like, especially now with his videos, like they'll catch me watching them. Um, so uh, kind of maybe talk about that video a little bit that inspired you. And then I have a follow-up question about Bo. Bo is a legend and he's not valued enough here in Australia. I think everyone needs to get around him. Like his current 12, what's he doing? Like there's 12, tech, 12 new things in December or something. 12 days of newness. That's it. Yep. Yeah. He's a legend. So I was in stuck in a hotel quarantine uh, two years ago or a year and a half ago, and I was watching his he, – he ran this this incredible – I think it was like 1,800-kilometer trek through the mountains, and he did it, um, yeah, and he just kind of went off and did it. And the way he sort of explained it, it was like, well, you know, he's very blasé. You know, I've got one mm. life. I just thought I'd do it. Not prepared. I'll just take what I can find. Um, and I was like, man – that is me. I just haven't acted on that, you know, like I've got that, you know, that's, that's how I am. I'm impulsive in every other aspect of life. And I do all of these in mini ventures. Why don't you go out and do a big one? Um, and literally the second that, that YouTube film finished, and then I watched another one. I did his, um, 20, was it a marathon an hour for 24, yeah. oh, sorry, a kilometer, no, sorry, a kilometer an hour yes. until he did a marathon. <laughs> Well, and the the coolest thing that I think about Bo Miles, especially with something with, you know, the running videos, which is just one more reason why I love the guy, um, even though I, you know, don't know him at all, is the fact that like he makes it accessible to everybody, which is I kind of think what you're getting at, too, is like, I mean, he literally is doing it with secondhand gear, with food he finds on the side of the road. Um, I mean, if he can do it that way, you know, he's I wouldn't say he's an Olympic trials level athlete either and he's out there doing it and he's maybe doing it for a lot of different reasons than you know a lot of people that are you know running for fitness or physique or mental clarity it's it literally is for fun and exploration yeah. which is you know i don't think high on the list but um you know i think sometimes it's good to kind of get away from the type a uh restrictions of running and just get out and explore a bit but my question there is has there been any crossover? Is there a collab? Is Bo going to come run with you? Like what's going on here? I hope so. He's probably like too famous for me now, but I should reach <laughs> out to him. Hey, <laughs> I'm actually, I know where he lives because he doesn't, he doesn't live too far from where I grew up. So to be honest, I definitely will reach out because he's a big idol of mine. Um, and as I move into Victoria, I'm sure he'll, he'll come for a run. I can't see him saying no to that. So yeah, I mean, he's inspiring. He's inspired me for years and I do love that. Cause that's why I run at the end of the day, I run for fun. It's what got me into athletics. It's what's got me out here. And yeah, one of the things I'm trying to do is show off how beautiful Australia is. I mean, not that we need more tourism, but just showing particularly for Australians that we live in this incredible country. Um, so and we don't do, we always go overseas. We're a big traveling culture. We don't spend a lot of time appreciating our own culture, our own Indigenous culture, our own Indigenous food um, and places. And we don't have we've kind of got this disconnect from our own country. Um, so I definitely, yeah, I'm definitely trying to showcase the beauty of Australia, um, its history and, and yeah, just show that there's some incredible places to run here. You just gotta, gotta go explore. So how many other individuals, man or woman have run tip to toe have done the entire length of the continent, which I'm assuming this is a little bit different track. Like this is, you know, a route that you plan specifically. Yeah. But this have is other not people an FKT. done this? Yeah, so there's the, there's I, I know one girl who's done it as an FKT. Um, no. she went, but here in Australia, there's this one highway called the Hume, and it's a it's very busy, and it just goes straight up. And you and but by the the kind of wait like by the crow's flight, um, mm -hmm. it's only three thousand eight hundred k's, and it's on roads the entire time, which is the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in the nature, in the back roads. Like I'm running for wildlife. Like I wanted to be immersed in the wilderness. So I've gone a very scenic, 
in the most scenic way. I've almost doubled the distance. But yes, there's one one lady who who did it for bowel cancer, I believe. Um, she did it. It was called Run for Bums. It was awesome. Um, <laughs> and there's a few men. I can't. I don't know of a woman, so I could be wrong. But there's a few men who have done Perth to Sydney, but across Australia, not down. Okay. I know three so- people who have done that. All right. So n- still um, not a huge crowd that's running the entire continent of Australia, which is so no. again, another no, feat. Um, yeah. not, and again, when you say that, um, the run across America, we, I think we get very, you know, um, geocentric that it's actually the same, kind of the same distance. So it's around the run across America is around 3,800 miles, like something like that. The same. Um, I'm pretty yeah. sure I'll look it up while we're on here my one of my questions was um since this is kind of for highlighting you know um endangered or you know becoming endangered uh uh wilderness have you had any wilderness encounters that were on the side of dangerous or interesting or just uh worth telling a story about yeah too many so um pretty much the last thousand kilometers of australia the most northern well, maybe even like 2000 Ks. It's all crocs, like it's croc country <laughs> and it's marine stinger country. So we have these box jellyfish and they will immediately kill you. <laughs> like you can't get stung. So here I, here I am running through, um, or well, again, the conversion, but it's about 30, 30 degree, 32 degree Celsius heat. So up around 100 Fahrenheit yeah. and you're running, running, running and you finish and you're staying on this the most gorgeous coastline you can imagine, but you can't go in because there's crocs, stingers, sharks, like everything under the sun will get you. Um, so, and then you think you go to a river and there's, you know, crocs in the rivers too. So <laughs> um, I also got chased by a wild bull up north as well. I had to get, um, I had to get a car. I had to holler down a car and they chaperoned me. Uh, so because I can't get I can't get in the car because my Garmin you know the, the, yeah. you can't stop it so it had to like chaperone me down the side um, but that's okay it is what it is um, sorry it's about to get loud I think we're all good okay <laughs> the, um, I think that is it we have cassowaries here which are wild but um, I didn't actually see one and they're endangered so I think that's maybe one of the reasons I didn't see one Um, and then we have this swooping bird called a magpie that Mm -hmm. I got swooped with probably I would say three times a run for the entire swooping magpie season of October and November so not deadly but very irritating. (laughs) So cas- yeah cassowary is basically looks like a raptor with a colorful um head for people that don't know um like a <laughs> yeah 100 looks like a dinosaur um also you're not selling the tourism side of australia because isn't it something like that five out of the 10 deadliest snakes are in australia and then you're telling us we can't get into the water because we're going to get killed like five different ways and if you foam roll you're going to get stung and bit it's <laughs> I've got more scared of Australian wildlife since I started running <laughs> wildlife than I ever have been in the past. <laughs> well, at least you're saving them. So they'll be around for other people to get terrified by as well, which is a admirable uh, adventure. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I've heard a lot so- of, I've heard a lot of people that have traveled there or, you know, won't travel there. That is their reason, which again, everything has its dangers and, you know, how real that is. You're going through a very wild route. I'm guessing there's a lot of things that you can do that are very tame as well. So, yeah. Yeah. If you go to a city, you're not going to see any of these animals. You're never going to see a death adder. You're never going to see a Taipan. It's only when you immerse yourself in their territory that you're going to, you're going to come up with it. And, you know, prevention is, you just need to avoid, you don't need, you don't poke them with a stick and I'll leave you all alone kind of thing. So you mentioned, um, I know a pretty big swath of time has passed, but running through for us, hundred degrees Fahrenheit, like what is that kind of like a norm? Like, are you running in nineties, hundred stuff like that every day? Yeah, so far north Queensland is kind of the tropics. It's almost it's close to Papua New Guinea, so it's it's just very hot all the time. And and I had to go. So we have dry seasons and wet seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, probably down south, and you would have a similar thing. Um, so I ran through the dry, the end of the dry season, but had to be out of the Cape pretty much by October when the wet season starts. 
but then so you're running through winter which is the dry season which is hot into an Australian summer um so it's been really hot the whole way it's really only now that I'm very south um that I've got this is the first um, couple of days I've worn a long sleeve jumper and the funny thing is now it's not even cold but I'm so acclimatized to the epic heat that you know I have to rug up <laughs> <laughs> well for all my uh listeners that are running nerds um again maybe this is just like uh fanciful editing but I don't see you carrying hydration pack or water bottles on these runs like what are you doing in this, you know, heat like this, uh, to hydrate, stay hydrated is it just like before and after, uh, do you, are you able to, the way that you're doing this, do you have like a crew with you the entire time? Yeah, I'm doing a bit of everything. When I was in the Cape, I had, um, yeah, I had a support crew, um, a very small support crew. There was three of us and, and I had someone on a bike on an electric, um, mountain bike and they mm-hmm. carried, four or five liters of water so don't get me wrong I'm drinking a lot of water two hydrolytes every marathon um I have a rule where I won't run more than 26 k's without which is you know 10 11 12 miles without Mm -hmm. eating um without eating a cliff bar or some sort of muesli bar or a piece of fruit I'll make sure I eat two times per marathon um when I'm in kind of cities, I just stop at bubblers and, and we'll just kind of find it. I've stopped at rivers. I, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I don't really mind. I'll drink river from, from running streams. I'll drink from waterfalls. I'll drink from, yeah, anything. I'm a bit of a forager, not, not unlike Bo Miles. I'll, um, I find things where I can. So I have a big love of running free. I actually don't like mm-hmm. carrying a heap of things. So I'd rather push the limits of probably what I should be doing and just find something down the track than carry it all with me just in case. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, hopefully we get like a, a bloopers or a highlight reel or something out of this at the end where you get to show us all of the stuff that you found that you ate or encountered. So is there any um, documentary? Like, how much are you documenting of this besides what besides what's going on social media? A lot. The plan is to turn this into a bit of an adventure film. Um, so yeah, everything's kind of on film. Everything that has gone wrong. Um, every time the plan A hasn't worked and we've relied on plan B. The the random places I've had to find a shower or, or a bath. Um, yeah, I mean, I've eaten everything from old pies and seven in like uh petrol stations to fruit i was finding bananas on the um banana orchards up north and yeah just just we have a lot of it on camera i mean i'm out on my own as well as much as i have support i will run for 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 days without seeing without a support next to me so a lot does get missed but i think in five and a half months of running we should collect a collect the story at least the, the main parts of it so i can't wait to see all that um so you only you have 25 left right so you're on the downhill portion well maybe it doesn't feel it does it feel like you're kind of rounding it you know the last turn um absolutely so as you get closer to the end of this um like you said earlier you're always thinking into the next day like how can i have preservation of you know getting enough sleep calories when you hit that you know 150th marathon and you're running, there's not going to be that next day to think about. Right. And from what I read, it seems like you and your partner both basically went all chips in on this thing, you know, and quit jobs. Uh, you're, you know, in a camper that I think was donated. Yeah. What, what happens after the 150th? Like what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I might go full for miles and just find some random adventures in and around where I live. No, I'm hooked on this. Um, I will definitely give my body a break. And, um, but I've deliberately uh, left the world open to see what opportunities come my way. Um, And there are a few, they're all kind of in the mix, but this won't be the end of this. The the most beautiful thing about starting Tip to Toe was the people that I've met that are doing like-minded things globally, not just in Australia, across the world who have said, Hey, do you want to collaborate? Do you want to, have you thought about this? Have you thought it's opened a new world to me. And now that I've seen it, I can't really unsee it. Um, mm-hmm. So I see something else in my future in this space, but I just don't yet know what that is. 
do you, <laughs> before you even did this and maybe you've, th- I mean, you've had a lot of time to think obviously while you're running, um, any, uh, can you give us any like sneak peeks or just ideas of maybe other physical kind of, uh, challenges or exploration that you've thought about doing or that you've always wanted to do? Yeah, I'm in two minds. I'm split down the middle. So I have entered Valencia in 2023, which is the marathon. It's in December, which gives me around a year to get fast again. I I think Mm -hmm. I'm fit. I just, I'm not fast. But in saying that, I don't know if I then want to go and try, say, a bad water or like Mm -hmm. a Moab, uh, what is it, 240 or, you know, um, some sort of big American ultra or not even American, but just a big, an ultra kind of that I've never done before. I've never done the trail. Mm -hmm. I've never explored the trail scene. And I think that's what my body's kind of set out for now. You know, I've got, I've got all the practice under my belt. I just haven't competed. I mean, another idol of mine is like Courtney DeWalter. Imagine racing her Mm -hmm. and getting absolutely towed up, you know, (laughs) <laughs> by 17 hours by her um but just that's probably what I would love to do next and then after that I really want to be challenged in a way that's not running because although tip to toe has challenged me physically it's it's challenged me in a space that I'm already very comfortable with mm-hmm. I wish I was running so maybe after this I would like to challenge myself physically and mentally in a space that I'm not already comfortable in whether that's a kayak or a paddle mm-hmm. or 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 an like an alpine expedition because I'm not good in the cold something that is outside my already comfort zone that's that still challenges me starting from the bottom and working my way up yeah um yeah I mean there it's kind of I wouldn't say there's a new breed there's always explorers right but we kind of see like uh you know different people trying to go out now and it's, you know, the world has been seen, but it's how can you see the world, right? Like, yeah, there may be only a handful of people that have run, you know, whether it's east to west or north to south across the continent, but it's kind of how you do it. It's your own experience. And then obviously, you know, what people get out of that, which was kind of what I wanted to end on here is what has been, a have you had any shifts like in a mindset or the way that you think about things, uh, whether again, the, whether that's in a physical nature, you know, mental status, like is anything majorly changed you during this run? I think everything has changed. I think that I can't go back to, yeah, I think now that I know that human body is capable of so much more and, and, and also the mind is capable of so much more that, yeah, I, I just, I'm hooked on, on working out what my boundary is. I mean, in 25 days I've done it and I've achieved this and it, I didn't quit. And so what, what, you know, what's the next thing I can do that will challenge me and, you know, push that limit a little bit more. And yeah, I think I've had, I feel very connected to the world in a way I've never felt connected. I feel very, I think when you're out there in the elements, you realize how small you are and how insignificant and how much you can just get pushed around. And I think it's a really humbling experience. So I feel very, a bit, yeah, a bit more savvy. I definitely feel stronger and resilient and I'm hooked, like hooked on learning more and more about the world, more and more about what I'm capable of. So I can't wait to see what's next. Although I better not rest on my laurels. I do still have 25 marathons to run. <laughs> well, that, so uh, what was your, and be honest here, what was your confidence yeah. factor before you started that you were going to finish this? Oh, 50, 50%. <laughs> I, I would say that's fair. No, um, I, I never ran more than two marathons in a row. Like I've never done, i never done two in a row. So to think that I would go out and do 150. And I said this to a lot of people. I said, look, I just want, if I can break the record, that's amazing, you know? Mm-hmm. And then the next day after that, I was like, if I can do a couple more, that's amazing. And now, now that I'm well in it, I'm like, no, I'm definitely getting to the finish line. No, nothing will stop me. But no, I mean, it was touch and go on my own personal belief at the start. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I, I think there's a lot to take away there in the end. Um, something that I thought was kind of interesting is uh, maybe you can uh, expound on this a little bit that you're out there in the elements and you said it makes you, you know, it kind of makes you feel small, you know, relative to everything else, but that actually inspires you to do more where I could see some people that would kind of be like, well, man, well, you know, what, what's it matter? Like I am this little insignificant thing. So can you just say something more about that of like, what, what'd you get out of that? Like, why does it make you want to do more? Like I kind of understand, but at the same time, other people may get defeated by that thought. 
Yeah, absolutely. So a massive crowd of coffees just oh, this is what you think like on the road. Can you hear all the birds? <laughs> we can, yeah. We're getting the wildlife experience here. <laughs> yeah, it's a full on wildlife experience. I'm in the middle of the bush, so they're just being very rude. <laughs> I'm out here saving them, guys. Be considerate. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, I I think for me, it's important to understand. I'm just trying to answer that as truthfully as possible. Why? I mean, yeah, I really, I really love understanding more about because when you live in a city, you're not, you're not, you don't understand the basic necessities of life. You don't understand shelter. You you, all, you don't understand that all you need really at the end of the day is shelter and food and water mm -hmm. and that's it when you are thrown out into the elements and you don't have anything at all that is exactly what you search for and if you just have a roof over your head a bottle of water and some food you are the absolute happiest person ever and i think every so often you need to immerse yourself in the dangers of the real world or the nat natural world because sometimes it's a very unsafe place to then realize oh wow i actually live this amazing like safe you know, you, you almost lose the value of, of the simplicities of life. So for me, going into there and, and understanding that is, and I also think you, when you get challenged in a little way, it's another reason you get another little lesson on what you're capable of overcoming. Um, and yeah, you learn a new, new life skill that I think is really important. You, you reconnect with nature. You have a new respect for nature. Um but yeah, the cockies might have something else to add to that. <laughs> I love it. It's it's ambiance with the whole theme here, so it works. Um, yeah, it's it's a different world, right? Uh, especially coming off the back end of COVID, it's kind of interesting that you know we this extreme um, safety net was cast over the whole world, and you know we know from a lot of people, from authors, you know, like the comfort crisis and. You know, mm -hmm. people out there doing their thing, like, you know, David Goggins and stuff that like, we have to conjure our own, I wouldn't say danger, but you kind of have to open up your, uh, your world to the ability to kind of face danger, face threats that are real, but we don't have, we don't have to go out and do those things. We don't have to experience those. Um, so I applaud you for that. And I, I mean, then there's just the whole fear or opportunity to fail right which a lot of people would yeah. do it just for that reason which is why i asked you know what your confidence was and yeah uh, you know most there are a lot of people that if they went into something even a marathon attempt and there was a 50 50 chance they're not going to finish they'd be like yeah never mind i'm just not going to do it so yeah. i think we need that more than ever is to go into the challenge in the face of not knowing if you're going to succeed or not i think that's the bigger challenge there couldn't agree more and the other thing is you need to you need to be okay with the answer no as well so for example I did, came from a very small background here in terms of my I guess public profile so getting I didn't have any credibility on doing anything like that so getting sponsors on board getting partners on board even just having people believe that I could do this you're going to get a no a no a no so then firstly you have to learn resilience to say, okay, well, if they say no, but for me, that personally was really hard is that fear of rejection that I know a lot of people sometimes have. So firstly, you're overcoming a fear of rejection and then you're going out into a world where you don't know if, if, if you'll make it or not. And, and even do, when you do get a sponsor on board, you're like, man, now I actually have to get to the finish line because it's all riding on my actions. So yeah, it's definitely been a strengthening exercise but I just think that's what life is all about you've got to get scared to feel things you know you've got to throw yourself out of your comfort zone and give it a go because you might surprise yourself you know and sport is such a metaphor for you know many things in life but and we talk about adversity through sport I mean you're a perfect example of that it sounds like you're going to come out of it not that you weren't before I mean you're absolutely made of steel to go into this thing in the first place but um yeah it's a you know, face down the nose uh, from, you know, seeking corporate sponsorship to dealing with an injury earlier. And I mean, keep, yeah. I mean, yeah, you just, it's kind of like you're forging yourself through a fire to go through this thing. So I, I can't wait to see, like, I'm kind of like on, you know, pins and needles, like, man, what's she going to do next? Like, you know, is she going to go call an O'Brady style and just start doing some crazy explorer stuff or what's it going to be? So mm -hmm. I'll be, I'll be keeping tabs on you for sure. And, uh, I also am just hoping that I click 
onto Bo Miles' channel and it's your face or vice versa. And I get to see some video and show everybody. Um, yeah, before we I will we reach jump... out to him now for you. I will reach out oh, to him after I, you say, hey. I'm going to <laughs> tag him in everything. I Who knows if he's ever going to listen to me, but um, yeah, I'll help out as much as I can. But um, Have you had him on your podcast? No, I would like to. Um, I feel like, you know, I, tr <laughs> I think Bo has so much to offer, but I honestly think my podcast would do him a disservice. Like I'm trying <laughs> he, cause he, it's like, I'm trying to help people with healthy, be like, I'm going to eat a, you know, an apple core off the road and like, you know, do, and it's, he is kind okay. of beating back a lot of what I think challenges people is that we have to have, you know, our extreme proper nutrition to go like accomplish my ultra. I have to have my perfect morning routine every day. I have to, you know, I have to, I have to, I have to. And he's like, no, you, you can just get it done with whatever. Right. And you, I mean, that's his, like, you know, in the best way possible, like that is not a knock on him at all. Like that's the biggest, mm -hmm. you know, compliment to him by far. Um, I would love to, but yeah, I feel like I'd just be like, you can, anything I say, you could just be like, nah, I'll just do it anyways. And that's kind of what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, in saying that, I do have a very, I, I'm a nutritionist, so I do have a very uh, un good understanding of what I need to feel myself. And as I said, I am very much, very strong on sleep as well. So there are key pillars that do keep yes. me going. And I think he, he obviously, we're again talking about, Bo, he talks about that as well. So I don't want to sound like he's just eating trash off the road and running crazy races, um, even though he does. Um, well, I, again, I don't want to detract any more time. Cause again, I know time is probably your greatest commodity, uh, right now as it is everybody else's, but even more so. So before we jump off here, is there anything else you would like to talk about in terms of, um, you know, again, the, um, uh, wilderness society or how people can get a hold of you or how people can donate or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been covered, but yeah, jump on the website if you're interested to follow along more. Um, we're doing, we, we, I update socials every day um, when I have some spare energy at the, at the end. Um, the videos are, are, are pretty good. They're all produced by my partner. So that's Tip to Toe 2022. Um, we have 25 days left. And you'll also see what's next there because I think that's where we'll, we'll start the next adventure, whatever that will be. Um, but yeah, I mean, I understand that I'm over here in Australia, but if you, you can give and, and want to, there is a there is a GoFundMe page on the website. Um, it's all going to Australian native animals and conservation here. Um, and anyone that is visiting Australia, come message me. I, I respond to every single message. I'll come for a run. I'll show you around. I know all the trails in Australia now. <laughs> <on the coast. laughs> so wherever you're flying into, I can help you out. <laughs> Well, I'll, uh, I'll put myself on the hook here because we started this project uh, last year and had to drop it for a couple of reasons, but uh, I'm trying to run from top to bottom. We're going to frame it something around if you're familiar with the movie Forrest Gump, yeah. um, where we run to BioLabatry, which is the most Southern point of Alabama. So we run from the top to the bottom of the state, which is around 30 or sorry, 360 miles which backing up, it's 3,061 miles across the U.S. for the run across America. So it's not that far off, um, far off. but run top to bottom. So uh, open invite, if you're ever in the U.S. sometime next year, when we're probably doing this, uh, come give come give part of a run. Uh, Send me the dates, because oh. I'm the kind of person that will just be there. I'll just show we're, up. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're trying to tackle it in a two-week time frame, because it's not that much. I mean, in comparison to what you're doing, that's what, uh, seven oh, wait, days. Wait. Eight. yeah yeah two yeah just under two weeks wouldn't it be yeah. or I can't, like, it's a hard <laughs> <event for me. laughs> um but yeah we're we're trying to put that together for uh around here coosa river keeper which is a, a waterway uh, or a watershed clean uh yeah uh non-profit so. so excited about this that is amazing yeah so um i can't thank you enough for doing this i know you've done a ton of pr i mean i literally typed your name into Google and stuff is just popping up left and right. So whoever your PR person, if it's you or your partner, kudos to them. Um, me, my <laughs> keep it going. You gotta, hey, if you, don't, if you don't have another thing to do after that 150 marathon, somebody's going to hire you to do PR. So you got that going <laughs> for you at least. Um, well, thank you again. And i um, signing off here at 11 p.m. I know it's about 4 p.m. your time. So I'll let you probably get back to eating some more calories. And uh, 126th 
marathon tomorrow, right? Which then yep. I get on the bottom leg and wrapping up January 16th. So I'll be following along. We'll post everything in the show notes for everybody else. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll say goodbye. So thanks again. Thank you so much. Go get some sleep. Yeah, you as well. Take care. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh.